and girls, ladies and gentlemen, as many of you are all very well aware, there was a little bit of a meeting, a little bit of a vote that happened over there on Wednesday that had a lot of issues to do with going on with the future of the Walt Disney Company. As you are all very well aware, Nelson Pelton, his Trion Management Group, and their board, or their selectees for the board of directors for the Walt Disney Company did not succeed in their win out there, although I did, a rumor is that Nelson Pelton did get at least 30% of the vote, so you know what? Not a bad try for the first time around. But that is to say, Bob Iger and all of his yes-men and or women on that board out there decided to completely and totally hold on to power, and all the Disney shareholders decided to keep going with the exact same people that have been driving their stock price and been driving their box office sales into the absolute toilet going forward. Well, of course, boys and girls, that's because Bob Iger, according to those people around him and those in the inside know, he's very charismatic. He can talk a good game and apparently he convinced a whole lot of people that yes, he is trying to change things behind the scenes. He is trying to move forward with a lot of the good directions and things and try to maybe get back to some good quality storytelling. Now, whether or not you actually believe that or not is completely and totally up to you because boys and girls, Bob Iger is coming out there the day after this vote went down saying that Disney's priority isn't messaging and infusing that into entertainment. No, 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 it's entertaining first. Now, the real question is this, is this the truth or not? Is this Bob Iger actually realizing the error of his ways, realizing that they're going down this path of woke nonsense and constant messaging injected into all of your storytelling simply fails at the end of the day and has been rejected by the main street out there in the world and certainly all of the fans out there, certainly all of the real fans out there. The real question about that is whether or not is that true? Is that what he's actually trying to do? And to be a little gracious to our dear sweet Bobby boy over there. Bob, can I call you Bobby? It's okay, I'm going to call you Bobby. To be gracious over there to our dear sweet Bobby, he, there has been reports coming out from Disney executives that have been leaked out saying that, yes, he is actually trying to go back into a more male-centric version and trying to get away from all of the agenda-driven stuff and that they were absolutely, absolutely over the moon pissed about the fact that he is no longer concentrating on D.I.E., diversity, inclusion, and equity, and instead actually wants to go back to good storytelling. Now, whether or not any of this is true, whether or not this is just a lot of poundering from people behind the scenes going for power or not, we don't know. The truth will end up coming out. The truth will end up coming out eventually, as then that will be in, the truth will be in the pudding when it all comes out. It'll we'll see how the quality of the projects are over the next few years, probably over the next five years, really before things get turned around in any way, shape, or form. Or, or the other question that I think a lot of you will be more likely to go with is Bobby Boy just lying and trying to save face and trying to save his stock price out there. Well, at the end of the day, that decision is going to be up to you, but we're going to give you what his statements are, what his evidence are, and exactly how things might end up going forward. So, here from Bounding into Comics, Disney CEO Bob Iger pushes back against critics, claims infusing messaging as a sort of a number one priority in our films and TV shows is not what we're up to. Even though all of the evidence contrary over the past few years has been completely and totally contrary to the statement, well, Bobby Boyd, maybe he's changing his ways. At his age, we'll see what happens. Shout out to Spencer for writing this up. Smash that like button and subscribe if you have not already. And what feels like a textbook case of gaslighting, Disney CEO Bob Iger has claimed that contrary to popular criticisms, the entertainment conglomerate does not consider the inclusion of socio-political messaging in the projects to be a number one priority. Really? Then explain the reimagined tomorrow documents and all of that stuff and the videos and all that kind of stuff that got leaked that was implemented under your regime, under your reign as Disney CEO, Bobby Boy. Explain that one to me. But I digress. IGN offered his take on the House of Mouse's Iger offered his taste. Iger has offered his take on the House of Mouse's current outputting during an April 4th interview, given to CNBC's David Faber following the company's victory in denying investor Nelson Peltz and former Disney CFO Jay Rosalo a pair of seats on their board of directors. And how the Dis I guess a lot of those institutional investors, a lot of them didn't want to see being going against Bob Iger and stuff like that. I think is what the story we heard behind the scenes on a lot of this kind of stuff. Because I just can't see any rational person out there who's not just worried about self-interest, who's actually worried about their stock price and making a profit of all of this kind of stuff. Could looked at what the Walt Disney Company's been doing over the last couple of years and thinking it was going anywhere near as well. But, oh, well, who knows? I'm not a Disney shareholder. We'll see what happens. We're going to see. And certainly, the stock price didn't react very well after this vote came out. It dropped like $2.5, and it's still been sitting around 2 to $3 lower than what it was when the vote before the vote happened. So, yeah, we'll see how Main Street, Wall Street's actually reacting as well. So following discussions on Disney's financial future, their plans for ESPN, and the recent settling with the state of Florida regarding the company's ability to govern the district in which Walt Disney World theme park is located... Yeah, which they lost, by the way. They settled and completely and totally gave up and stopped deciding to fight Florida. Yeah, they conceded. Iger was eventually asked by Favor for insight as to how he weathered the very public hostilities that have been leveled against him, particularly from Tesla CEO Elon Musk in recent years. In the reply, the Disney CEO asserted, per transcript of the interview provided by CNBC, I ignore it. Yeah, there's no relevance to the Walt Disney Company or to me. 
I don't believe that for an instant. Bob Iger's ego, his narcissism, would not allow him to have this stuff not get under his skin. Trust me, it's his ego and his narcissism that brought him back to the Walt Disney Company. And trust me, his ego and his narcissism might be the only thing that actually causes anything to turn around inside this company. But I'm not holding my breath. But trust me, he's lying here. The Elon Musk stuff gets to him. We've seen that. Further pressed by Fabok as his thoughts on both Musk and Peltz's respective anti-woke campaigns, Iger affirmed, People have been coming after me and the company for years. And it's just, I don't get distracted by those things. Met with pushback from his host, but with the woke thing has had more of an impact. Yeah, you don't get affect, you don't get distracted by those things. Uh, explain your box office numbers and how bad things are doing. Uh, are those not distracting for you, Bob? Because you've lost, you lost over a billion dollars last year and you've been losing billions of dollars on your streaming services the entire time. Uh, does that, does, does, does that get distract? Does that distract you, Bob? Does that get to you? But the woke thing has had more of an impact. I mean, you said to me that you would love to just be out of the culture war. Do you feel like you're succeeding in that? Iger then declared, well, I think, yes, I mean, I think the, the noise has sort of quieted down. Really? Because the views on my videos don't say the noise is quieted down. I'm pretty sure there's still a lot of us out there talking about it. A lot of people in the mainstream and a lot of the common nerds out there that are very, very interested in this stuff. I've been preaching this for a long time at the company. Oh, have you? Before I left, uh-huh, and since I came back, that the number one goal was to entertain. Really? Really? Before you left, huh, Bob? Because before you left is when all of the Reimagine Tomorrow stuff came. It's when all the quotas got implemented. That you said half your Marvel characters were over there by Feige. We're all going to be 50% female now. So, really? You were preaching good storytelling first and not this nonsense? Hmm. Me thinks I don't believe you, Bobby boy. Me thinks I don't believe you. I think the term woke is thrown around rather liberally. No pun intended in that regard. Oh, ho, 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 ho. aren't you funny, Bobby? Aren't you funny? I love it. I might came back. The number one goal is to entertain. Uh-huh. I think a lot of people don't even understand really what it means. Oh, yes, you little people. You don't understand what it means. You, you, you peasants. You peasants. You simply don't understand at the elite level that I do. You peasants. The bottom line is that infusing messaging as a sort of a number one priority in our films and TV show is not what we're up to. Really? Um, louder and prouder, anyone? Um, we've got uh, the Star Wars whammon power nonsense that we've got. We've got Kathleen Kennedy self-inserting herself into Indiana Jones and having it basically to be an entire movie about bashing Harrison Ford and Indy as a character. Um, really? Really, I mean, we, we we have a very much longer list if you'd like to go through the back catalog of videos. They need to be entertaining. They need to be entertaining. And look, we're the Disney company. Can we po can have a the Disney can we're the Disney company can have a positive impact on the world? Whether it's you know fostering acceptance and understanding of you know people of all different types, great. But generally speaking, we need to be entertained. An entertainment first first company, and I've worked really hard to do that. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know, I've worked really hard to do that. You know, God, Bobby boy. Taking note of his guest's final sentence, Faber then inquired. I like this Faber guy, by the way. He's not, he's, he's not, he's not holding, he's not holding back. He's willing to not pull his punches. I like this Faber guy. I don't know who he's doing working for, but I like this. In what way? What do you mean when you say that? And it's a friendly reminder. I've worked really hard to do that, to be an entertainment first company. Well, Iger replies, what has he done to do that? Engaging with our executives, engaging with the creative community, you know, returning to our roots, you know, making sure that everybody's aligned on what our priorities are, you know, and understanding that, look, we're trying to reach a very, very diverse audience. And on one hand, in order to do that, what you, the stories you have to tell to really reflect the audience that you're trying to reach. But that audience becomes, they're so diverse. Oh, yes. The demographics for Marvel are so diverse. I don't know. What is it? 80% male? 70% male, maybe we can generously give you 60% male, right? Yeah, the overwhelming majority. I don't know, maybe when your audience is like 80% male, you shouldn't write stories that are bashing men the entire time. How's that for diversity for you? I don't know, strange concept, strange concept, strange concept. And on one hand, in order to do that, the stories you have to tell really reflect the audience that you're trying to reach. Well, I don't know what audience you've been trying to reach over the last few years, Bobby boy, but apparently, uh, according to those receipts, you ain't reaching any audience. 
Huh, but that audience, because they're so diverse, really first and foremost, they want to be entertained. I know, right? First and foremost, it doesn't matter how diverse the audience is. It doesn't matter if we're Hispanic, black, white, yellow, green, purple, or translucent. We don't care. We just want to be entertained. That's, that's story, good storytelling above all other things. Wow. What does that sound like? I don't know. Every YouTuber or every video podcaster or every, uh, I don't know, personality out there on the internet for, I don't know, the last 15 years that had half a brain in their head and never loved any of these properties like a true fan. Well, I wonder who's been saying that for all this time. Hmm. 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 Weird. Weird. Really, first and foremost, they want to be entertained. And sometimes they can be turned off by certain things. You think? You think? Like, I don't know, maybe calling your fans, calling your audience racist and sexist and homophobic. You think maybe some of those things might turn off fans, Bobby boy? You think maybe a few of those things might do it? Hmm. Me wonders. Me thinks. Me ponders. And we just have to be more sensitive to the interest of a broad audience. Yeah. Because that broad audience ain't showing up to your movies anymore. They ain't filling your coffers. They're not picking up your ticket sales. They're not buying your merch. There's a reason why you go to Ollie's, and I have personally done this, and you see Star Wars and Marvel toys all over the place and in large quantities. And go look at the characters for yourself. And you tell me, why do you think those toys aren't selling? What might have gone wrong with those toys? It's not easy, he ultimately concluded, you know, so that you can't please everybody all the time. As noted above, Iger's claim that the company does not prioritize social political messaging in their projects is patently absurd given not only their actual output in the recent years. From the Proud family, Louder and Prouders full-on dive into anti-racism and identity politics to the various race swaps and such productions as the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Percy Jackson and the Olympians to the entirety of whatever She-Hulk attorney at law was, there exists no shortest of examples of Disney making their messaging a priority. And on top of that, I will add Doctor Who to that as well and so many other things that have been acquired. Oh, by the way, Power Rangers. Yes, boys and girls, any of you that actually love Power Rangers out there, Disney owns the rights for that stuff now too and guess what the new edition of the power rangers is going to be lgbtqia plus alphabet soup friendly yeah so diverse ladies and gentlemen so what do you think is bobby boy trying to turn the company around is he trying to go in the right direction is he trying to fix the things has he finally realized the error of his ways probably not This is probably all gaslighting. It's probably all lip service. It's probably exactly what it is. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. And if I am, I'll gladly be willing to answer that. I'll be like, you know what? Bobby Baby did finally see the writing on the wall. He did finally turn things around. He did finally pull his head out of his ass. But boys and girls, I think we've all learned over the years, watching all these Hollywood idiots, watching all of these idiots in general, all these acolytes of the cult, they will gladly give you lip service. But at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. You know a fruit, you know a tree by its fruit. After all, ladies and gentlemen, and I hate to tell you right now, I'm pretty sure all the fruit we're going to get from Walt Disney Company, especially under Bob Iger and his board's leadership, is going to be nothing more than rotten. And at this point, it's burn, baby, burn. Enjoy being king of the ash heap, Bob, because unless you're serious here, which most of us don't think you are, the company, as we all knew it, the great and powerful, the great and wonderful House of Mouse, will just be a shell of its former self, and you'll have no one to blame but yourself, Bobby boy.